Can Christians worship in Mecca? In their homes they can. No! Did you hear him? The apologist for Islamic supremacism says that Christians can worship in their homes. How generous! Now if we passed a law in this country calling for Muslims to be humiliated, the liberal left would be ripping out their hair, <laughs> ripping their clothes, and running naked in the streets, having painted their breasts yellow, screaming about Islamophobia. It was a liberal, pluralist, secular society that has bombed in the Middle East, not a Christian one. I want to talk about today is why Christians must stand against ethno-nationalists. There is a movement in Europe, a rise of a particular narrative that talks about saving the white race because there are certain groups within our society who believe that the white race is in danger and that we should defend the existence of the white race. These people are better known and better described as ethno-nationalists. You will have all heard about ethno-nationalists recently because an ethno-nationalist walked into a mosque in New Zealand and killed 50 odd innocent people simply because he believed that he needed to save the white race. And these people sometimes try to dress themselves up as Christians, try to use the language of Christians to justify their political narrative. And what I want to talk about today is why as Christians we must oppose ethno-nationalism. Why as Christians we should oppose this repugnant, backward, in, inbred, unthinking, irrational ideology, narrative. And our principal reason for objecting to that ethno-nationalism is because our brothers and sisters who are not white will be amongst their first victims and have already been so. Let me give you an example. Dylan Roof was found guilty for the Charleston church shooting. He targeted a black church because it was black. Let me read some of what the news papers reported. A South Carolina jury has found Dylan Roof, the self-avowed white supremacist who killed nine black parishioners in a Charleston church in June 2015, guilty of all 33 federal charges he faced, including hate crimes, murder, attempted murder and obstruction of religion. Barring appeal, the conviction means that Roof, 22, could either spend the rest of his life in prison or be subject to the death penalty. Sentencing has been scheduled for January and Roof has been cleared by Judge Richard Gurgel to represent himself in those proceedings. The experts have suggested this leaves Roof a high school dropout with no legal training, much more likely to be sentenced to death. Nine white jurors and three black jurors took less than three hours to come to a unanimous decision on the charges. In addition to these federal convictions, Roof will also face a trial on state charges scheduled for January. Roof could be sentenced to death in that trial too. In a statement, 
South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley said, it is my hope that the survivors, the families and the people of South Carolina can find some peace in the fact that justice has been served. And so it has. Christians must not climb into bed with any form of ethno-nationalism, any kind of white supremacism, any kind of narrative that seeks to separate man according to the colour of his skin, as opposed to that more noble, more honourable narrative given by a doctor in the faith, Martin Luther King, who said you should judge a man by the content of his character, not by the colour of his skin. There are many Christians, many Christians, who have found themselves in bed with nationalist forms of ideology because they think that to defend Europe is to defend something Christian. However, to defend the church is to defend something that is supra-national, supra-ethnic. It sits above national identities. It sits above racial identities. And as Christians, we must oppose any ideology that would denigrate our brothers and sisters in Christ simply because they are not white. There is nothing special about being white. It is an accident of your birth. Like being black is an accident of your birth. Like being Arab is an accident of your birth. There is nothing innately superior about the colour of your skin. And those of you who judge a man purely because of the colour of their skin demonstrate how unthinking, how backward, how uneducated, how uncultivated, how savage, how degenerate you truly are. When a man thinks that he is justified in taking life just because of colour, they have demonstrated themselves to be the worst kind of human being there is. They're right up there with abortionists. They're right up there with those who slaughter Christians purely because of their religion. But please note, ladies and gentlemen, that when these black Christians were murdered by these ethno-nationalists. We Christians did not try to hijack the tragedy and call it something that it was not. We didn't say that it was Christophobia. We didn't try to play the victim card and say that we Christians were being targeted for our faith. Why? Because we were not. They were targeted because of the colour of their skin. My brothers and sisters murdered purely because they were black. And if that makes me a race traitor, then I'm proud to be one. By contrast, in New Zealand, an ethno-nationalist equally, abhorrently, criminally, backwardly and degenerately murdered Muslims purely because of the colour of their skin. But what happened in the media? They mislabeled this crime as Islamophobia. They mislabeled it as a targeted crime against Muslims. Why? Was it because they were telling a truthful narrative of events? No. Anyone who read the manifesto of this backward savage 
would know that he was motivated by a racial ideology, not by a hatred of religion. There are Christian Arabs. There are Christian Turks. There are Christian Malaysians. There are Christian Indonesians. And he didn't want any of them in the white world. So why then did the media lie to you? Why then did the media portray this heinous crime as something else other than what it was? It is because the media have decided that any opposition to Sharia law or to Islamist supremacism or to Islam as a system of beliefs or values is guilty of a thought crime. And so that is why they mislabeled those events. That is why they lied to you. Because the liberal left are afraid. They are afraid that people have seen Islamist supremacism for what it is and that they wish to oppose it. Where were these same liberals when Christians were being butchered by Islamist supremacists in Pakistan? Where? were these liberals when Christians were being butchered in anti-Christian pogroms in Egypt, when a church of Christians were bombed? Where were these liberals when 120 Christians were murdered in Nigeria on March the 11th of this year? Did you hear about those in the news? Did you hear about the black Christians killed because they were Christian in Nigeria on the 11th of March? No, you didn't. Why not? Because the media wants to construct a narrative. A narrative that is a lie. That Islam is a wonderful religion that never does anything bad or stands for anything evil and that Christians are not persecuted by Muslims when two mass murders happen at the same time. You don't hear about the black Christians in Nigeria but you hear about the Islamic phobic attack in New Zealand. You have been lied to. What are the Liberals saying? Are they saying that 120 Christian lives in Nigeria are not worthy of the same kind of coverage as the 56 Muslims in Indonesia, sorry, in New Zealand? Is it because they are black that they are not worth talking about? Is it because they are poor that they are not worth talking about? Or is it because they were Christians hacked to death by Islamists because they were Christian? Ask yourselves, does the liberal media talk about racism and the evils of racism? Yes, it does. So that's not the reason. Do they talk about the poor and the plight of the poor in the third world? Yes, they do. So that's not the reason. But how many times do you hear about Christians being butchered because they are Christian? like they were on March the 11th this year. You don't. And that's because the media 
does not want to construct a narrative that Muslim Islamists are persecuting Christians because of their faith. I invite you to wake up, to wake up, to wake up to the lie that is being brought over your eyes. If you are a Christian, then grow some balls, grow a backbone, stand up for your community, become an activist for the church. Stop being a wimp. Stop letting them walk all over our community. Stand up for your brothers and sisters. Perfect. In answer to the brother's question, which is the true church according to me? There is only one church. It is the church of the disciples of Christ. The one holy, Catholic and apostolic church and Protestants, Catholics and Orthodox all belong to it. It is the only church that exists. So, are there any questions on the topic? Notice the liberal, he says, that Christians brought this killing upon themselves. Christian history. Christian history is full of killing. He just said that Christians who were hacked to death, man, woman, and child, brought it on themselves. That's what he said. And that's the kind of attitude that we Christians must stand against. We have to stand against people like him. So, are there any questions on the topic? He said it was Islamophobic, right? It wasn't Islamophobic. So why do you, why do you take those mosques then if it wasn't Islamophobic? So the brother asked the question, why did he target a mosque? Two mosques. The answer to that is obvious. Islam in New Zealand is an immigrant religion for the most part. And it's obviously a place where you can find the most immigrants. That's why he targeted two mosques. But the ethno-nationalist who targeted the church in America, targeted them because they were black. The supremacist in New Zealand, in his manifesto, was quite clear. He hated immigrants. Excuse me, what's the name of He was Australian. Do you think I'm trying to defend him, brother? No, but he was Australian, wasn't he? he was what's your point? That he, he's saying he's anti-immigration. He was anti-immigration. He himself was an immigrant. The brother mentions the fact that he was an immigrant. I agree. Every white colonialist in Australia is descended from immigrants. That's why the whole narrative is stupid. My own ancestors came here in the fourth century. We're not native. So, but listen, why do you not hear about the persecution of Christians by, Christians, by Islamists, by, by Islamic supremacists? It's because the liberals don't want you to have that narrative. So they hide the truth. That's why you don't hear about the mass murder of 120 Christians in Nigeria on March the 11th. That's just a few weeks ago. And you don't know anything about it because the liberal media don't want you to think 
down certain avenues. They only want to hurt you down other ones. Any other questions on the topic? Where is the evidence of the liberal media sitting and deciding this? All the media of all of the democracies sit down and decide to be asked ask, ask for the camera. And speak up so everyone can hear you. Yeah, yeah, go on. Ask a moronic question. Please shout. The allegation is made within the Muslim world that this man was a Christian. This vile, degenerate thug, scum of the earth, was a Christian. Well, do you recognize, can you point do you to me, Bob, anywhere within his, within his manifesto he that he Jesus published Lord that Savior. says, I am a Christian? Can you point to me so, anywhere? Yeah, the ladies and gentlemen, the terrorist that attacked in New Zealand never identified as a Christian. He identified as an ethno-nationalist, as an eco-terrorist, as a defender of the white race. So what happened last week was we saw the Dawa team that bunch of apologists for radical Islam that operate in this park attacked Christians saying that this man was a Christian. They too lied. And it is a convenient lie of the liberal left. Because the liberal left are ideologically committed to the nonsense idea that all religions can be equally no, as culpable of the kind of they're violence that we are they're seeing from Islamic radicalism. But the fact of the matter is that in 2017, 48,000 people died because of Islamic radicalism. The figures are in no way comparable to any other group except the communists of North Korea. Those are the only comparable group. So why have you been lied to? Ask yourself, ask yourself, why have you been lied to? Christianity is dying in the West. The brother doesn't ask a question. Is there anyone the wants to ask a question about the topic. Um, Speak up, brother. Thank you, brother. So, you were saying that the 48,000 people were killed by Islamic extremists? Yes. Well, what a, you, know, you could argue that the Christian West bombed Syria and Iraq over the last 20 years and, and killed... Millions. Millions. Well, millions. Millions. Yes. John Hopkins, I'm, you know, I'm, usual. I'm not... I'm not, I'm not, I'm not I'm not debating, you know, whether it's right or wrong. I'm no, just saying. You're making a very logical. Thank you. Thank so you. Let me, let me address <laughs> common sense. Thank you. Uh, let me deal with the brother's point, because this kind of moral relativism is the very kind of moral relativism that is making it incapable for the West to defend any sense of its own identity. I don't care about the West. Let it fall. But that same kind of moral relativism is also infecting the church. And that cannot be allowed. The church has the right to defend itself against those that persecute it. No, let's be clear. The comparison of the West as Christian is a convenient comparison. The West does not identify as Christian. We live in a post-Christian society. The West identifies as a secular pluralist society. And so the brothers description of the political West is in error. It is only brought forward as a convenient lie to justify, to equivocate, to diminish the horror of the murders that are coming from a radical Salafist Islam that must be opposed 
every bit as ethno-nationalism must be opposed. Have anyone wanting to ask a question on the topic? Why are you filming me? Bro, he can film you. I'm going to stand next to you. He's filming me. Yeah, don't touch other people's cameras. Brother, you're not in charge here. There is, we are not your dimmies here. And anyone can film in this space. You're already on camera. You're touching other people's properties. Are you a Muslim? You're not a Muslim. Okay, fair enough. Be interesting. Sounds a bit like Takia, but okay. Anyway, any questions on the topic before I move on? If, if he was protecting the white race, why did he kill white Muslims in the mosque? Why didn't he spare them? So, Including children. yes, so the counter narrative, the other convenient lie that is being made to support the lie of Islamophobia, that this was an Islamophobic attack was that there were white victims but the reality is the reality is that those people were victims because the man would have considered them as race traitors that's why they were also victims that's why they were targeted but let's be clear the militant left, the progressive liberals, are using this incident to try it. One second, to try and silence criticism of Islam, to try and silence any form of resistance to Islamization, and they are doing it because they are the ones that are afraid. They are the ones that are scared that if the church was to stand up for itself that they would have a situation that they cannot control and that is why they want to silence those who wish to stand up to Islamic supremacism and they soon very soon this brother first then this brother and then this brother so, therefore, they have made it in our culture that only Islamophilia is acceptable politically as political speech. And that kind of suppression of free speech, of the contrast of ideas, will be the very death of Western liberal democracy. Christian. This kind of battles, it's happened in Spain and in Austria. Why he put that, uh, this uh, name of this battle in his weapon, in his address also? Okay, it's a fair question. So the brother asked, why did this degenerate backward terrorist who murdered people simply because they saw them as immigrants, as not belonging to white nations, why did he reference a battle of the liberation of Spain from Islamic occupation? It is because white nationalists think that they have some hold of church history, that they have some claim to the struggle of the church. And I'm here to say that they don't. The liberation of Spain from Islamic occupation was a multinational affair in which Christians from around the world travelled to push out Islamic occupiers of Spain Perfect. and to liberate 
their brothers and sisters from persecution and Islamic suppression. The white nationalists have no claim to this history. There were Arabs fighting with Christians to defend Christian communities. And it has nothing to do with defending the white race. It is simply an accident of history that many Europeans were Christian and the lands that they were defending were the lands of their ancestors. But that struggle that Christians in Europe fought in Spain to end the injustice of Sharia law there was also fought by Ethiopian Christians to defend their land from Islamic occupation in Ethiopia. He's next. Uh, what, what, do you, what do you think of Tommy Robinson? What, what's that got to do with the topic? Well, you said you're against Islam and that, uh, aren't you, and Islamic... Uh, okay. I just want your views on him. What you think? So, the question is, what are my views of Tommy Robinson? My view on Tommy Robinson is that he should become a Christian. Next question. You mentioned Spain just a minute ago and you said they came to cleanse Spain from the Muslims, but they also cleansed it from the Jews. Why is that? So, he didn't mention the Jews as well. He wants to talk about what happened after the liberation of Spain. Notice the way that he romanticized the history, cleansed it of its Muslims. What he forgot to mention was that those Muslims had invaded Spain, a Christian kingdom. They had occupied Spain for 700 years, that they had persecuted Christians in Spain, and that they had spent 700 years trying to invade all the Christian lands around them. But when Christians had liberated Spain, they then went on, they then went on to persecute the Jews. I'm not here to defend that. I'm not here to justify it. It was a mistake. Incidentally, it was also a mistake that other Christians in Europe thought that was wrong. The Spanish Inquisition is called the Spanish Inquisition because it was opposed by the papacy. It was opposed by bishops at the time. The persecution of the Jews we are smart. is something we are smart. that we Christians have done our male culpa upon. But have the Muslims Europe. done their male culpa for 1400 years of persecution of Christians? No! No, they haven't! What leading Muslim figure has condemned the persecution of Christians by Muslim caliphates over the last 1400 years and said that it was a mistake rather than justify it? But I heard the Pope say the persecution of Jews in the medieval period was wrong. That's the truth. So ladies and gentlemen, in my closing statement, I invite you to free yourself from the lies of liberal media, to free yourself from the prison that has been put over your minds. And if you are a Christian, I call you to greater activism for the cause of the church. Stand up for yourselves and your brothers and sisters. Grow a pair of balls. Get a spine!
from North Africa. And think about North politics the North as Christians the hands of this in solidarity the with race. Christians Whether you like it rather you than history, borrowing you from laughing, the political narratives of the socialists, the conservatives, the yes. Marxists, what the liberals, or the greens. The Think you for yourselves, Egypt. Christians. Stand up Egypt. for your people. Create Egyptian. a political Look, narrative of Christian world, solidarity our with our brothers and sisters, of she Christians for Christians. No. Christian skin. Thank you. No, you're English. You made I'm up take race. A break. Saint Augustine brought Christianity to England. Of a Muslim country where Christians are not persecuted was an outright lie. No, that's a Give me another thing. Muslim country no. where Christians are Finish not persecuted. The argument. There's a difference no, between no, being illegal no. And being I know what the argument is. I'm not Show going off punishment. track. I'm not going off track. Give me an example of another Muslim country where Christians are not persecuted. Because Jordan, Palestine. Let's see if Christians are persecuted in Palestine. By the Jews, yes. Let, let, let's, well, let's, let, let's, let's have a look. Christians persecuted in Palestine by Hamas. So, his next lie, his next lying example was this one. He said Palestine. He said Christians were not persecuted in Palestine by Muslims. They were persecuted by... Oh, my Google's gone. By... Uh, um, by Palestine, by uh, Israel. And there is some truth to that narrative. But let's just look. In, this, is, this, is from, this is from Open Doors, which is a Christian charity that supports Christians where they are persecuted. And this is what that charity says about the people that it's supporting in Palestine. Caught in the middle is how they describe them. In general, Palestinian Christians face ethnic persecution from Israelis as a result of the ongoing Palestinian-Israeli conflict, which is true. They do. Their ethnicity results in many restrictions from the Israeli side, like other Palestinians. Christians experience these limitations on a daily basis, and they are a motivator for relocation. Their faith also puts them in a minority position within the Muslim-majority Palestinian community. Palestinian society is conservative, and conversion from Islam to Christianity or changing from one church domination to another is unacceptable or socially undesirable because of the close links between family and religion. So in other words, how are Christians suffering? All Christian groups, all Christian groups, struggle with travel and other limitations imposed by Israeli authorities. Those who convert to Christianity from Islam, however, face the worst Christian persecution and it is difficult for them to safely participate in existing churches. The West Bank, they are threatened and put under great pressure. In Gaza, their situation is so dangerous that they live their faith in uttermost secrecy. So again you lie. Perfect. Again you lie. Did you notice how did you notice how he just glossed over the fact just glossed over the fact that because of the prejudice within the Muslim community of Palestine that converts from Islam have to live in secret and in hiding. This is an apologist. This is an apologist for Islamic supremacism. Let's be right who he is. He is an apologist for Islamic supremacism. So now we've caught you out on two lies. Give me another example of a Muslim society where Christians are not persecuted. Where's your third lie? You haven't given three for three. The first one you said is I have not. The other one you said I have not, not given the, the camera. The, the camera will tell you the lie. So where's the third one? No, the okay, brother, we'll, we'll talk. Do you support Christian Zionism? Israel has their own country and taking over Jerusalem. Do you as a Christian support that? I, I support Christians don't that I, I, I have I have opposition to many of the policies of Israel, but I think Israel has a right to exist.
to, we're going back to this. So, so you where's your third oh, example? I'll give you a third where's example. your third example? Because we've proven you wrong twice. Where's your third one? The third one, you don't think there are examples where Muslims are also persecuted in Christian countries. Right, because so your you third example is to change topic. No. So I'm now that we've I'm shown him up no, for the no, lies no, 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 that he no, no, told no. when he said that Christians were not persecuted in Muslim countries, yeah. now he wants to change the topic. No. Ask, and, uh, give me a third example because you've been caught out lying twice. I'll give you another one. Tunisia. Tunisia. A place where Christians are not persecuted. Oh, okay, good. Fact check. Because is it legal to convert to Christianity in Tunisia? No, persecution, not conversion, persecution. Okay. Right, let's have a look. So he said that there was no persecution of Christians in Jordan, and we proved him wrong. He said there was no persecution of Christians in Palestine, and he said that he was wrong. But just before I continue, just before I continue, I'm going to ask you two Muslims, and just answer honestly. All right, I'm going to ask you as a Muslim, just be honest. If Britain passed a law said that, saying that it was illegal to convert to Islam in this country, would you say that Muslims were being persecuted? I would respect the law, but I'll convert secretly. Right, would you believe that it is persecution of Muslims? Would you say it's Islamophobic? If they don't punish me, if they don't put me in jail... Yeah, they, they put you in jail. They put you in jail. In jail? Yeah. Or any kind of legal punishment. If Spanish, I would say yeah, Right, so there you go. So there you go. We, le we see the double standards no, of the no, no. Islamist Listen, apologists. I'm giving you an honest if answer, you pass Michelle. laws that restrict conversion to Islam, he calls it I'm Islamophobia. You, no. But if you pass a law that says that it is illegal to convert to Islam, yeah. sorry, to Christianity from Islam, he says that's not persecution. No that's the logic no. of the Islamist no, 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 supremacists. That's the honest. logic of the Islamist supremacists. So, let us honest. look. No let us look at the persecution in Tunisia. Oh, Bob. Because this is his third lie in a row. He got caught out about Jordan. He got caught out about Palestine. And once again, he lies because he says Christians are not persecuted in Tunisia. So, for Christians in Tunisia, life within Islamic society comes with hostility and daily pressure and the threat of Islamic militant activity, especially those returning from fighting with ISIS is still worrying I'm talking about governments at the political level he just spoke too soon thank you very much perfect for setting up all the stittles for me at a political level islamist political parties are still influential islamic militants spread fear throughout the country many having links to organized crime a journalist who investigated the situation of Tunisian Christians in depth states the following Tunisian Christians are you listening face discrimination and targeting it's not persecution do you see and targeting and targeting that is often obscure and hidden to the public eye it affects their day-to-day -day lives because of their Christian identities. Wow. Many believers experience various forms of anti-Christian persecution, such as job insecurity, abandonment from families, friends and fiancés. They are victims of verbal, mental and physical abuse. Are they punished? But the they Islamist punished? apologist yeah. says apologist. that that is not persecution is it so is it so let us let us do a thought experiment if we verbally abuse muslims in this country according to him that's not persecution if we physically abuse muslims in this country according to him that's not persecution so when muslims do it to Christians, it's not persecution. I didn't say that. But if someone does it to a Muslim, 
It's Islamophobia. I never said that. Mm. That I even is the, the apologist no. that is standing before you. An Islamist apologist operating in the corner. Can I ask you yes, sir. Where does this kind of attitude come from in the, the beginning? What attitude? What do you say to the, the prejudice the, against Christians. Prejudice against yes. Christians. I don't have any prejudice against Christians. When? Where does it, where's the source of it, Bob? Where's, yeah. the, where's okay. the kind of heart of it? Let me answer this brother's question. Let me answer this uncle's question. Oh. Uncle, thank yeah. you. <laughs> we, call, we call everyone here uncle. It's just a sign yeah. of respect. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's only because of English culture that we've lost the sense of respect for our elders. Right. So, yeah, tell that to the 120 Christians who died in Nigeria because of Muslim Christophobia. Yeah, that's oh, that's oh, 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 hatred's I mean, bad. Are you spreading? Yeah. Yourself from the very heart of this Let me deal with this question. Don't generalize. Let me deal with this question. Let me deal. Brother, let me deal with this brother's question. Let me deal with the uncle's question. So, let's be clear. Let's be clear. We've seen the double standards operating in this short dialogue. Now, where does it come from? Where does it come from? I would contest it comes from Sharia law itself that describes Christians as kufar. That is an insulting derogatory term that is packed full of emotional implications that degenerates the dignity of the Christian human. It comes from the fact that the Quran itself calls for Christians to be humiliated. Now, if we passed a law in this country calling for Muslims to be humiliated, the liberal left would be ripping out their hair, <laughs> ripping their clothes, and running naked in the streets, having painted their breasts yellow, screaming about Islamophobia. Perfect. But yet, when we see 1,400 years of consistent practice in every single example of an Islamic caliphate, from ISIS to the Ottomans, to the Abbasids, to the Umayyads, to Muhammad himself, where Christians are persecuted, we are supposed to believe the lie that it is not because of Quranic teaching. Tell that to the martyrs of Cordoba. Tell that to the Christian children who were kidnapped from Romania and made Janissaries. Tell that to the Christians who were enslaved in Eastern Europe. Tell that to the Christians of Palestine. Tell that to the Christians of Egypt. Tell that to the Christians of Syria and Jordan and Pakistan and Turkey. Tell that to the Christians of Saudi Arabia, where Islam has been unchallenged for 1400 years and where it is punishable by death for a Saudi citizen to become Christian. He wants to lie again. Go on, tell me a lie. Say it. Say it's not illegal in Saudi Arabia. Is it a lie? Can, tell, me, tell me this has nothing to do. Tell me this has nothing to do with your prophet. Tell me this has nothing to do with Muhammad, that it is not Islam. You tell me this. He was the most merciful man, unless you happen to be part of the Jewish tribe, the Abu Quraysh, in which Muhammad sat there and allowed his followers to murder prisoners who had surrendered in war. And he had them all butchered. And then he had the women given away as sexual concubines to be traded amongst the Muslim community. That is your more merciful prophet. By comparison, by comparison, 
Yeah, surely, 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 surely. 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 By comparison, we Christians have a better example in Jesus Christ, who was a man in a time when slavery was normal, and he never had a slave. We love him. At a time when women were not seen to be equal to men and he treat them with equal dignity at a time when revenge was the cause of the day and he taught forgiveness and compassion and love to the outcast to the leper to the ones excluded from society i will take jesus christ over muhammad every day of the week and i invite you to do the same can I ask a question? You're against he wants to ask a question do christians face some kind of persecution in the west do christians first persecution in the west yes they do let's be clear the west is not christian the crimes of the west are connected to a liberal pluralist secular society it was a liberal pluralist secular society that invaded iraq not a christian one it was a liberal pluralist secular society that has bombed in the middle east not a christian one you have been lied to christians do not have at this moment in time any coherent political narrative and therefore you can't ascribe the political crimes of the west to the church because the church needs desperately to develop a christian political narrative a way of thinking about politics that starts from christian identity and finishes with christian identity the your last question apologist for islam and islamist apologist and then i'm going to go you are against islamization of europe yes yes is it no wait wait i want to correct myself i'm against islamization of the world i don't i want to see mecca have a cathedral where the kaaba is that's what i want to see i want to see a cathedral in mecca a cathedral in medina where the divine liturgy can be sung to our god in a society that persecutes Christians. When they allow you a mosque in the Vatican, I'll happily allow you There is already a prayer room for Muslims in the Vatican. Yeah. Hadouken! 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 Both, listen, my last question. Are you you're both are chapels in Saudi Arabia. You're both. You're both in listen, Saudi Arabia. No, I'm not saying you are. You are both. Brother, brother mentions a particular point. That the Saudi Arabian government that makes it illegal to become a Christian in that state, punishable by death, has in the last 20 years allowed the cath a cathedral to be built in Riyadh. What he didn't mention was the fact that that cathedral can have no crosses, no outward features that show that it is a church that its music cannot be heard on the street that the christians cannot do their ceremonial processions in the street as is our custom that we cannot share our faith as is our practice that we no 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 that we cannot allow Arab citizens who are born in Saudi Arabia to worship in that church. That is their example of tolerance. Thank God, thank God many Saudi people faith here. There are thousands of Saudi citizens who have become Christian and they live their faith in secret because Islam has practiced in Saudi Arabia a place 
where Islam has not been challenged for 1400 years is an intolerant, backward ideology that denigrates Christians. Can Christians worship in Mecca? In their homes they can. No. Did you hear him? The apologist for Islamic supremacism says that Christians can worship in their homes. How generous, how magnanimous of this Islamist that we Christians should be allowed to worship in our homes, that we can't congregate. No, let me ask him a question. No, let me ask, let me ask, let me ask the Islamist a question. If we passed a law in the UK that said Muslims could not go to mosque, that they had only to pray in their homes, would you say that was Islamophobia? No, I would respect the law of the land and I'll pray at home. No would you say it's Islamophobia? No, that's the law of the land. I would respect it. Does anyone actually believe him? No. Who actually thinks? Who actually thinks that if we passed a law that said Muslims could only worship in their houses, that the Muslims here would not be screaming Islamophobia? What do you believe? Oh, we know him. But yet, but yet, but yet, when we talk about Christophobia, about the persecution of Christians in the Middle East, people like this apologist here, this Islamist supremacist, says that verbal abuse of Christians is not persecution. The physical abuse of Christians is not persecution. That saying that Christians should worship in their houses is not persecution. That making it illegal to become a Christian is not persecution. That making it illegal to build churches is not persecution. That casting Christians out of their jobs because they became Christian is not persecution. That forbidding Christians to practice their faith fully and completely is not persecution. That is the kind of Islamist narrative that must be opposed by every Christian. Because you, if you ignore it in Pakistan and you ignore it in Kosovo and you ignore it in Egypt, then it will come here. As we have seen in France and in the UK already, where a Christian convert from Islam, Nisar, Muslims tried to murder him in this country because he left Islam. But did any of you hear about Christophobia in the media? About the prejudice emanating from parts of the Muslim community? Did you get lectured by the liberal media about why it was wrong or why you should stand up to it? No, you didn't. Soon, soon. Because the liberal media see themselves as your shepherds. They have put rose-tinted glasses over your eyes so that you only see the world in one way and you ignore everything else. Wake up! Free your mind! And become a Muslim. Uh, Bob, you said you oppose Islamization of Europe and the world. Yes? Yes. A lot of Muslims in Europe convert on their own accord without being forced. What's the problem with that? What is your so, problem with that? Once again, he is trying to change the subject. He is trying to change the subject. 
I was talking about how it is illegal, illegal in every single Muslim majority country where Christians are persecuted by either the state or the cultural society or both and he wants to create a false dichotomy because we all know the Muslims are false dichotomy by non-existent persecution of Muslims on the one hand and the widespread universal persecution of Christians in every single Muslim majority society in the entire world on the other. If they want to be Muslim, you have been lied to. Free your mind. The media says, look over here. I invite you instead to look over here. Look at what the media is not telling you. Look at what the media is silent about. You are being lied to. Free your mind. Look again at the persecution of Christians and be as loud and as vocal about Christophobia in the Islamic world as the liberal media are vocal about Islamophobia. Raise your voice, challenge the liberal elites, challenge the bourgeois echo chamber, challenge those snivelling, virtue signalling hypocrites who see themselves as your moral teachers. Free your mind, O oh Christian, because the liberal West wants you to be weak. They want you to be a doormat. They want you to be a passive Christian. As a Christian, you are called to be an activist. The Apostle James wrote in his Catholic epistle, do not be hearers of the word only, but doers of the word. And what is that word? Christ taking a garment, taking a garment, washed the feet of his disciples. And he said, on this day, I give you a new commandment. Love one another. What is new about this commandment? He is speaking to his apostles about loving and serving one another as a community, as an identity, as a church. Which means that we Christians must concern ourselves with meeting the needs of our brothers and sisters. And that means standing in solidarity with persecuted Christians wherever they are persecuted and by whoever persecutes them. Free your mind. Be a better disciple of Christ, O oh Christian. Grow some balls. Get a backbone. Stand up for your community. Use your skills, abilities and resources to defend the cause of the church and the Christian community. In a world where Christians are increasingly being persecuted by a liberal state that is supposedly pluralist, but will accept ISIS fighters returning from Syria and Iraq, but will not accept persecuted Christian refugees like Aisa Bibi from Pakistan or the brother who converted most recently in Iran and who cannot flee here because our liberal, pluralist, secular society 
doesn't want a Christian refugee. I'm going to take a break and then I'm going to come back and talk some more. I'll be over at the cafe if you really need to talk to me. I greet you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord.